can do it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Fort Snelly National Cemetery. As you're probably aware, um, your loved one's about to become a part of a national monument. Having said that, this place is pretty much run like the military. You'll have between 10 and 15 minutes to say your final goodbyes, and then I'll come back and stay with her until we take her to her final location. We're very, very sorry for your loss. We do ask, however, that you wait till after 3.30 today to go out to, this, to the grave site because of the equipment and stuff they don't want anybody getting hurt. So, we're very sorry for your loss. Thank you very much. I can't videotape it. Well, I'd like to uh, begin by reading a passage from Second Corinthians chapter five. And Seems very appropriate to me for this time. Verse 1, For we know that if the earthly tent, which is our house, is torn down, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For indeed, in this house we groan, longing to be clothed with our dwelling from heaven, in, inasmuch as we, having put it on, shall not be found naked. For indeed, while we are in this tent, we groan being burdened because we do not want to be unclothed, but to be clothed in order that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. Now he who prepared us for this very purpose is God, who gave to us the Spirit as a pledge. Therefore, being always of good courage, and knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. We are of good courage, I say, and prefer rather to be absent from the body and to be at home with the Lord. Therefore also we have as our ambition, whether at home or absent, to be pleasing to Him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that each one may be recompensed for his deeds in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. This passage talks about groaning in our earthly tent, our bodies. We saw mom groan um, physically. I believe the groaning here is actually referring to the spiritual and how we struggle in these fleshly bodies to please the Lord to, to avoid sin and to do what he wants us to do but there is a physical groaning as well it says in the previous chapter though our outer man is decaying and we saw that happening as we watched mom slowly cast off her earth, earthly tent in preparation for receiving the eternal immortal heavenly one yesterday at uh, Rice Lake we heard a sermon about worldviews, the biblical worldview versus the earthly worldview. The earthly worldview that sa says that life is now, and we better live it to the fullest now because well, we don't know what happens after death. But the biblical worldview says that death is the gateway to life in its fullest, most complete sense. Because it says here in this passage that we are then at home with the Lord. It doesn't get any better than that. Funeral, funerals are really for us, not for the deceased. Mom and Dad have run their courses and left us an example to follow. And we've remembered that at the funeral on Saturday. It was a good time. This passage just says, however, that now it's our responsibility to finish our own courses uh, by living by faith, by living to please Him, by living with an understanding that we will one day have to give an account of how we lived our lives to the Lord Jesus himself. So this should give us give real meaning and purpose to every day that we are given from now until the time that it's, it's our time to shed our 
earthly tents and take on the heavenly one.